Hi folks, and welcome to the first tutorial in the series, Coding in the Classroom. In this tutorial, I'm going to show teachers how you can set up your teacher account in Code.org. We're also going to start exploring some of the courses that are offered in Code.org's Code Studio. So let's start by going to the Code.org homepage. You can do this by simply typing in Code.org. Once on the home page, select the Sign In button in the top menu. And today we're going to create an account. We will be creating a teacher account using our SD91 email. Now, some of you may notice that I'm using my maiden name. Um, I already have an existing code.org account that I don't want to mess up, so I'm creating a new account um, for the purpose of this tutorial. You'll need to create a password, as well as a display name, and I've learned from experience that your display name should contain no spaces so that your entire name does show up on your dashboard. I'm going to leave the school name blank. Please have a careful read through the terms of service. You can opt to print this if you'd like. Um, we'll be looking at the terms of service in greater detail as we start to put together parent resources and consent forms. Once you've read through the terms of service, click the I agree and sign up. Upon signing up, you should be taken to the teacher homepage, and this teacher homepage contains all sorts of resources. So once we've obtained that parental consent, we'll be creating our courses and our student accounts through this card. Today, we'll actually be starting um, some courses on our own through uh, the Code Studio card. You can also look up lesson plans and resources, access teacher forums and technical support, um, locate upcoming professional development opportunities, and even connect with a computer science specialist who could perhaps join your classroom via a video conferencing session. So let's uh, head now and um, into the Code Studio and start exploring some of the courses that are available to us. So for the purpose of this collaboration group, we're going to be focusing on the 20-hour computer science fundamental courses. So I really encourage you over the next little while to explore these courses, um, keeping in mind the age of your students, um, your students' specific needs and experiences, and how the content of these courses can align with BC's new curriculum. So course one is really intended for those non or early readers, so kindergarten grade one. Course two is intended for those students who have little or no prior coding experience, um, all the way from two, grade two on up. Um, course three and four are to follow course two. And then we have the accelerated course. And the accelerated course um, is recommended for middle school years, so grades six, seven, eight. Um, it combines the content from course two, three, and four into one course. So it does move at a fairly um, rapid rate. I'm working through this with a small group of grade eight students, and I'll let you know um, how, how that experience turns out for us um, as we proceed. I think that most of our elementary classes will be starting with course two. So let's go into course two by try now, selecting try now, and let's take a look at how it's set up. So once you enter the course, you can view it um, either as a teacher or as a student. So in teacher mode, you have access to all of the lesson plans. Each of the courses is split up into a series of stages, and each stage contains activities followed by assessments. So the assessments are outlined in blue. Unplugged activities are those activities that are done offline and often um, contain like a student worksheet. And so you can access all of the resources that you would need for that particular lesson um, by simply less, uh, clicking on the view lesson plan. And if you scroll down, you can see that you can download the worksheets and print them off for students. So this is for the unplugged um, part of the lesson. Now you'll also notice if we scroll down to the bottom of the page that there's a little key. So as you and your students um, proceed through the course, the activities will become um, different colors. So yellow if it's in progress, a light green if you or your students have completed um, that particular activity, but perhaps you're not coding efficiently enough, so you're using too many blocks. Bright green if you've completed and it's perfect, and then again that blue if it's an assessment. And you'll be able to track um, your student progress using that um, student card that I showed you in your teacher homepage. Obviously, um, though, we need to create our student accounts before we can do that. 
Okay, returning back to the top, let's now take a quick look at um, some of the activities. So let's go to stage three. And when you open stage three, um, any of the stages actually, the stages all start with a short um, introductory video telling students or showing students what they're going to learn and practice within that stage. I'm going to skip the video for the purpose of this tutorial. And so in this particular um, activity, I need to get the bird to catch the naughty pig. So I can see that I need to move over two or move forward two spaces. So I'm going to move two blocks over um, and then I can hit run. And sure enough, the bird catches the naughty pig and I get some feedback. I can press continue and you'll see that it, the program automatically proceeds to the next activity. Now at any time in the course, you can access the little orange arrow and that'll show you where you are in the course, um, how you've been progressing and where you need to go to next. Notice too that there's a drop down menu by your name. So at any time you can use this drop down menu to return to your teacher homepage or to return to your um, Code Studio page. So let's do that now just to show you. Oops. Um, you can see here once I return to the, co uh, to the Code Studio page, you can see that I've started course two. It saved my progress and I can continue once I sign back in. Um, you can also access your account. Uh, so if you wanted to change your pass, uh, password or update your information. And please get into the habit, um, you and your students, of signing out when you're done. So I hope this was able, this little tutorial was able to provide you with um, a brief overview of how to set up your account and get started on the courses. Um, I look forward to collaborating more with you and seeing you in the next tutorial. Okay. Thanks. Bye.